Grace and peace in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, as we continue to celebrate his resurrection and our salvation. I am Reverend Barbara Weekle, and we are the people of Memorial United Methodist Church in West Carrollton, Ohio. Thank you for joining us to worship God and receive good news. Today, we consider how the first believers lived and how that might influence the way we live as individuals and as God's beloved community. Let us join the Alleluia's of creation as we sing number 162 in the United Methodist Hymnal. <clears throat> difference does it make? Sometimes the difference is obvious. When we make a choice or act in a way that changes the course of our lives. But often we don't see much difference in the way things are when we do something. When we write a letter to a politician or participate in a peace walk, no policies change. What difference does it make? Why bother if it doesn't make a difference? What if the proof of Jesus' resurrection is not the empty tomb, but a community of believers willing to suffer for doing good, eager to share all that they have with one another, eating together, and praising God at all times? What if knowing Jesus is alive proves that following his way leads to true life, not just in the future, but here and now? What if we give up worrying and hoarding, set aside anger and revenge, feast on food and conversation at every meal, what if we see God's amazing works wherever we look? What if we praise God without ceasing? What difference does it make? All the difference in the world. Let us sing together, Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing, found in number 57 in the United Methodist Hymnal. Oh, 
The epistle lesson for today is from 1 Peter 2, 18 through 35, from the message. You who are servants, be good servants to your masters, not just to good masters, but also to bad ones. What counts is that you put up with it for God's sake when you're treated badly for no good reason. There is no particular virtue in accepting punishment that you well deserve, but if you are treated badly for good behavior and continue in spite of it to be a good servant, that is what counts with God. This is the kind of life you've been invited into, the kind of life Christ led. He suffered everything that came his way so you would know that it could be done and also how to do it step by step. He never did one wrong thing. Not once did he say anything amiss. They called him every name in the book, and he said nothing back. He suffered in silence, content to let God set things right. He used his servant body to carry our sins to the cross so that we could be rid of sin, free to live the right way. His wounds became our healing. You were lost sheep with no idea who you were or where you were going. Now you are named and kept for good by the shepherd of your souls. Let us sing Sweet, Sweet Spirit, found in the United Methodist Hymnal number 334. The epistle lesson this morning is from Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to 47. I will be reading from the Common English Bible. And somebody's trying to escape. <laughs> Y'all don't know what you're missing in the back. I love it. <laughs> well, the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the community, to their shared meals, and to their prayers. A sense of awe came over everyone. And God performed many wonders and signs through the apostles. All the believers were united and shared everything. They would sell pieces of property and possessions and distribute the proceeds to everyone who needed them. Every day they met together in the temple and ate in their homes. They shared food with gladness and simplicity. 
They praised God and demonstrated God's goodness to everyone. And the Lord added daily to the community of those who were being saved. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Oh God, we want to make a difference in the world because of your great love for us. But sometimes we are stuck in patterns without realizing they are barriers to others. Help us sell our possessions and give the resources to those who are in great need. Through Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. I love the way we do church, she said. I love the organ, the choir, the rituals, and the messages. But if everything changed, drums and guitars replacing the organ, praise choruses instead of hymns, a casual atmosphere where people chatted and sipped coffee, I would still come to this church. I would come even if I didn't like it because someone would be here that needed good news they couldn't receive any other way. A 21st century believer willing to sell her possessions, meeting and eating together, demonstrating God's goodness to everyone. And no, I did not make that speech up. It was spoken by a young woman who came at the invitation of a friend and who stayed until she moved to Wisconsin for her work. A young woman who, after taking a job in Cincinnati after graduating from Wright State University, drove at least twice a week to Dayton from northern Kentucky. A 21st century believer who is living like the earliest followers of Jesus Christ. Who knew? Now, to be fair, this is one of those occasions when all doesn't mean all. In other parts of the Acts of the Apostles, we hear of Ananias and Sapphira, who sold their property but kept part of the profits for themselves. And worse... They lied to the apostles when questioned about it. Check it out to learn the rest of the story. We also hear of quarrels between the Jewish and Gentile widows about who was being fed first and who was being left out. And of course, Peter and the original disciples weren't particularly eager to welcome Paul and his Gentile believers. Like us, the first century believers were a mixed bag, trying to do their best to live up to Jesus' teachings, with some doing better than others, and sometimes being better than others. But if even a few were faithful to the description in Acts, what an impact that was making upon others. Now, if we accept these words as a prescription rather than a description, we have a practical look at what Jesus intended. They were attentive, devoted to the teachings of the apostles. We have a few samples of those teachings in Peter's sermons and acts and in the letters of John, not the gospel, the one, two, three, John, that, that part. And in the words of First and Second Peter, and these words reinforce Jesus' teachings. Set aside your personal preferences for the good of others. Care for the physical needs of people by healing and feeding. Suffer, if necessary, for doing the right thing. Serve obediently, even when the boss is wicked. Now, now that one deserves some interpretation when it comes to a harassment, violence, and cheating, whistleblowing and reporting may be the best response to, per- to perpetrators. 
We live in a me first world. Putting the community first, sharing everything is not an easy task at any time. But it's particularly difficult when it seems everyone around us is grabbing the good stuff. And it's even more difficult when we're getting preferential treatment, often without even realizing it. White privilege is real. And it can't be overcome by people of color. Only when we who are privileged see our privilege and refuse to take advantage of it will racism be reduced or eliminated. Male privilege is real. Women still make less on average than a male doing the same work. And I'm here to tell you it's definitely true in the United Methodist Church. When a woman is replaced by a male pastor, his salary is increased by thousands over what she received. I know this because it happened at my former appointment with the encouragement of the female district superintendent. And when laws are passed to ensure the fair treatment of LGBTQ people, an immediate backlash of opponents arises, even though the fair treatment of all people should be our greatest priority if we care about our community. And it's even more so if we claim the name of Jesus Christ. You know, in addition to our regular Monday night gatherings at Bullwinkle's or El Rancho Grande and addition, in addition to the lunch bunch at Marion's on the fourth or final Mondays, we will be sharing food and fellowship following worship on May 28th in honor of Pentecost and our graduates. And then on June 25th, we will gather once again following worship for a shared meal. And sometime in July or early August, there will be a welcome celebration for Pastor Jeremiah and his family and friends. Yay! And that doesn't include the many Sundays when quite a few folks have lunch together at Wendy's. From these shared meals, we form relationships that nurture not only our bodies, but our spirits. We laugh we cry, we celebrate, we grieve. A meal following a celebration of life is the most healing gift we can offer one another. That is the moment when, for many families, life resumes in the midst of death and loss. Make no mistake that the primary sacrament of the church is a holy meal. In the first century, the bread and wine were shared as part of a potluck with each person contributing what they could and with leftovers being taken to those who were unable to participate and by those who had nothing to eat. Only when the church began to erect buildings for worship did the sacrament become limited to bread and wine. When we know one another well, we are far more likely to share our lives and our possessions. <clears throat> At a congregation I served, Russell was the treasurer. And like many treasurers, he thought his opinion was the deciding factor in any activity. The congregation hosted an annual meatloaf dinner. And the discussion of what to do with the profits was held. And Russell suggested firmly what should be done. Some of the women said, uh, uh, wait a minute. We are the ones who do most of the cooking and serving and cleaning up. We want to say in what happens. That was a rare occasion. Mostly what Russell wanted, Russell got. Well, shortly before I left that congregation, I heard the story that Russell was raised by a single mother related to the primary family within the church 
but not bearing their name. Because they knew his history, the congregation was willing to let his voice be heeded, knowing that it was important to his well-being. And of course, Russell would never suggest anything that would harm the congregation or its members. Those persons who claim to be spiritual but not religious miss the point. Our relationship with God is all tangled up in our relationships with one another. The better our relationships with one another, the better our relationship to God. Or the better our relationship to God, the better our relationship with one another. I don't know what happened to prevent Ananias and Sapphira from sharing what they had. But if I had to guess, I would guess they missed a few common meals. And they probably got a little lax about being in the temple and their prayers with little feelings behind them. I don't know what made the Hellenists complain about the unfair treatment of their widows. But it might be that they heard a few comments about, you know, those people from some of the Jewish believers. Perhaps the Hellenists felt like outsiders, latecomers. And they, like Russell, wanted to feel they were valued by their Jewish brothers and sisters. I do know that the apostles responded to their concerns and respected people were chosen to care for the practical needs of the community, both Jewish and Hellenist, including Nicholas from Antioch, a convert to Judaism. In a column I read recently, someone had asked Billy Graham who to complain to about the music the church was using. Should it be the pastor or the music director or someone else? Billy suggested another path. Be open to the music, whether it be old hymns, new hymns, praise choruses, or gospel that would lead the people into the presence of God. Give up your possessions of music and ritual and the way things ought to be done in favor of hearing what God is saying and doing in new ways. That, my friends, is first century believing. That is first century community, focusing upon what is holy rather than what is preferable. John Wesley's covenant renewal service includes these words. Christ has many services to be done. Some are more easy and honorable, and others are more difficult and disgraceful. Some are suitable to our inclinations and interests, and others are contrary to both. In some, we may please Christ and please ourselves. But then there are other works where we cannot please Christ except by denying ourselves. 21st century believers who follow the practices of first century believers will discover an awe of God's amazing grace among them. They will devote themselves to the teachings and share meals with gladness and demonstrate God's goodness to everyone. Dear friends, may it be so with us that day by day, God will add to our community those who are being saved. Amen? Amen. Prayer of Confession and Words of Assurance. 
Jesus, forgive us when our resurrection fails to make a difference in our lives. If we continue to ignore the needs of others, show us the consequences of our indifference. If we speak harshly to one another, silence our voices until we can speak words of love. If we lift up our complaints instead of praises to God, place a new song upon our lips and in our hearts. Teach us, Holy One, to allow your life to make a difference in us. Hear the good news. The mercy of God is plentiful. Offer to us while we are yet sinners. That proves God's love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Well, I don't know, since I've been here, I guess. We're going to offer peace to one another. Um, I invite you then to stand and, and greet those near you with the words, the peace of Christ be with you, and the response is, and also with you.
you don't need to. I want to say thanks to Helen Hutch for serving as our worship leader this morning. Also to our musicians, our tech team, and our other servant leaders. Thanks as well to all whose prayers and financial gifts support our ministries. And please remember that online giving is available through our website. Now, um, the church um, line was very busy this morning. I spoke briefly uh, to Sharon and about having Jeremiah come, our new, your new pastor Jeremiah, coming and having a, a meal with us and some time to get acquainted on May 15th. And by the time I came out, it had spread all over the place. <laughs> That's fine, <laughs> but let's get the details correct. Jeremiah and his family and friends, whoever he wants to. On May 15th, Sharon will make reservations for anyone who wants to eat with us at 5 o'clock at El Rancho Grande, right? And then at 7 o'clock, we'll come back here. So if you don't do Mexican or you don't, you're too busy, you can't come and you still want to meet Jeremiah and his family, Come right here at 7, and we'll hang out, and you can ask questions and annoy him the way you annoy all pastors. Okay? No. Not really. He is very eager to get acquainted with you, so I hope that you will be able to share some time with him on May 15th. Okay. Um, no one has given me any other announcements, which is pretty frightening, because there's probably something else, but uh, anything? 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 On the screen? Oh. Okay. Okay. That's it then. Thank you. <laughs> That's not on my screen. Okay, in my defense. My friends, wars continue in Ukraine and Sudan and with citizens losing their lives and homes and hope. Fentanyl is making front pages once again as drug-related deaths continue to rise. And more than once a day, mass shootings are taking place somewhere in our country. Children continue to be at risk from poor education systems and food insecurity. Elders are facing difficult decisions as prices rise and incomes don't. So let us pray. Pray for all of God's creation and all of God's peoples that we may be reminded to share in God's work of healing and offering hope. Oh God, it is frightening to read the newspaper or hear the news. For we are reminded of all the pain and trouble in our world. We have enough with our personal struggles and griefs without taking on the anxiety of the world. And yet that is what you command us to do. Love our neighbors as a sign of our love for you. And so we pray, seeking mercy, compassion, healing, and blessing. For those who are in pain, denial, grieving or losing hope, for places 
filled with violence in homes, neighborhoods, and nations where lives are being threatened and lost. For those for whom city streets are their only home, for addicts and unemployed people willing to work and persons with mental illness and those suffering from PTSD. For all these and those whom we name with our hearts and our voices, be present with them, O God. God of all mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for our threatened creation and for human systems and leaders, seeking protection and restoration of water, air, and soil, for careful use of creation's many gifts, for leaders to act with integrity and accomplish the tasks assigned to them, for voices of influence to speak truth to power, and for those who control assets to overcome self-satisfaction for the benefit of workers, citizens, schools, and social systems of support. God of all mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for the followers of Jesus that we might share all that we have, worship, work, and eat in simple community and become your testimony to the world. We pray for Bishop Palmer and Superintendent Wilson and Pastor Jeremiah and for all who lead your people. We pray for humble servants on their knees to wash neighbors' feet, for apostles who proclaim good news, for disciples who willingly take on the pain of the world even to risking life. And we pray for the people, mission, and ministry of this congregation and for the communities in which we live and serve. God of all mercy, hear our prayers. We pray in the communion of the saints using the words Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us raise our voices in joy as we sing Marching to Zion, number 733 in the United Methodist Hymnal.
books down and let's clap, okay? <laughs> We're marching, marching by. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, start it over again. Let's get it right. Marching to Zion. Amen. What we do and who we are as those who believe makes a difference in the world, not just our lives, and not just the lives we see among friends and family in the world. We make a difference by our love and compassion and service. Go, therefore to make the world a place of greater love and dignity and hope for all people. In the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, amen and amen.